to grease pencil I would suggest you check out some of my earlier tutorials my grease pencil tutorials before you check out this one I put a link below so just click on that and that will get you in uh, the basics overview because this tutorial is I don't go over step by step how to do stuff it's kind of a broad overview to try to get your head around understanding grease pencil okay let's jump straight in there all right guys if you're if you're coming um, to grease pencil or blender 2.8 from a, a 2d um, background understanding grease pencil can be a little bit daunting a little bit um, confusing for some people that is so I'm going to try and break it down as simply as I can to try and get you to understand the grease pencil object and also one of the other um, points I think is really important to, to just get into grips with playing around with grease pencil okay so this is a this object here is a, a grease pencil object. Now the grease pencil object is is basically a three D object that could be moved in your x, y, and y and z axis. Yeah. So because it's a three D object, it can be moved in three D space, like I'm doing now moving it back and forth. So that's a 3D object. It's an actual real time, real world 3D object. Now within this grease pencil object, you have your layers. Now these are the layers I created earlier. So you've got your ink layer, you've got your block color, and then you've got your shadow. So that's the shadow there, and that's the ink layer. Let's get rid of, let's hide that. So that's your ink layer. Now these layers are within the individual object. Now I call this uh, ball blue. When it first, when I first created it, it would be just called grease pencil. So if you, when you first create a, an, a, a grease pencil object, you go add grease pencil blank. And now that is a grease pencil object. You can't see anything because I've not drawn anything. But that, that is what it'd be called. And then you call it whatever you want. Say you're creating a, a square, you'd call it square. And then you'd create a, you guessed it, a square. Yeah, so that's your square. And that is a, a um, now a, a, a grease pencil object. Okay. So as I say, this is your, your grease pencil object. And within the grease pencil object, you've got your layers. Yeah, and each grease pencil object will have its own layers. Yeah, so you could have, say for example, you could have 10 uh, grease pencil objects, but each one of these grease pencil objects will have their own layers, which basically kind of like a child of the object. So you've got your layers within the grease pencil objects. So it can get a little bit confusing. And you also will have your materials within that particular individual um, grease pencil object. So let's just touch on the materials. So what I usually do is I would then, say for example, this, this ball blue, I would then have uh, the materials for this ball blue. So I've got that coincide with my layers. So I've got my ink material uh, again, and I've got my block color material and I've got my shadow material. Now, so that I never, I don't get confused. I've got them all linked. So I will draw on that layer for my ink and on that layer for my block color and on that layer for my shadow. Now, the thing you have to understand about layers is as if you're drawing on plates of glass. So your first layer would be your ink layer. Your second layer would be, be a block color. So that'd be below your ink layer. And then you've got your, um, 
your shadow layer would be your last layer because you know it'd be usually your last you can obviously change it up for whatever particular project you're doing but those principles are, are the foundations of understanding uh, grease pencils so say for example because this is an object this one's called ball blue so let me just duplicate this object so I'm going to duplicate the object now we've got two balls now we've got two we've got two blue balls that sounds slightly rude but but anyway moving on swiftly so we've got that that blue ball so if i want to make this you got to remember i want to make this i want to make this now a red ball so all i'm going to do is i'm going to change that in here you can also you can just change that in here and let's just call this red ball okay so we've got a blue ball and we've got a red ball. Now, what I've done is when it's copied over into the red ball, it's copied my layers that I've already created. So all I need to do is change that block color blue. Let's call it to red block color. And then all I need to do is go to the materials and then make sure I go on, uh, click on that one here. Let's delete that and then just add a new one. And then we're gonna just call that red. I created one earlier on, but I'm just gonna create it from scratch just to kind of hopefully not confuse things. I'm gonna call that red. Let's give it a red color. And then we're gonna go up to there and then we're gonna to go to the red uh, block color. So we've got ink. Let's move this up uh, so it's above the shadow. Make sure we're in the correct red block color. And then if we just went to draw mode and then we clicked on the object. And now we've got our red color. See what I did there? Yeah, so we've got our ink, we've got our red color, and we've got our shadow. So we've got two objects. So you, the main thing what I'm trying to get at here is to try and understand that your grease pencil object is an independent, independent entity in itself with the layers uh, below it yeah I hope that this tutorial okay the other thing I really I want to touch upon uh, which I think is really important to understand in a grease pencil object is understanding the origin point of a 3d object now the origin point is when you create a grease pencil object it creates a point or in 3d space or where the center basically the center position of your grease pencil object in the case of this blue ball, it's um, it's this at this point here. Now you can move this uh, origin point to anywhere you want within the 3D object. So say for example, we want it at the bottom of it. We just click on this icon here, which is your 3D cursor. Click on the bottom here, and then you right click, and then you go set origin to 3D cursor. Yeah, and now, um, if I was to rotate this 3D object, it's going to rotate around this point here. Yeah. Now, um, Grease Pencil have recently updated your um, the move, the origin point in here, but it doesn't affect. Let me show you. In here, it, you can change. You can just move your um, origin point in here. But for some reason, it only works on a 3D object and not on a 2D object. Maybe they'll update that in the future. Let me just show you exactly what I'm talking about. So if I was to add an object here, so if I've got add mesh cube, and then I move this cube up, and then I can move it. Again, I could do the exact same thing, um, get the, the cursor, the 3D cursor, and then go set origin to 3D cursor, and then the point moves, and then again, if I rotate it, now it will rotate around that point uh, but you can also in this point here go origins affect transforms origins and then i can move 
that transform freely without using the 3D cursor here. However, and then if I and then if I were to turn back that on, it's gonna it's gonna move that point. However, this feature isn't available in a grease pencil just yet. But keep an eye out for it. I'm sure they're gonna eventually update that feature. So the, the, they're the two main principles of understanding grease pencil. So just again, quickly to overview it again, the grease pencil is an independent 3D object that you can move around in 3D space anywhere within the world. world. And within the grease pencil object, you are gonna have your layers within it, yeah? Within that. So if you understand those principles, you're good to go.